Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon and the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You're listening to the second episode in the Designing a Strategic Website series. Today we're talking about designing a strategic homepage. And just like last week, I recorded this live on Facebook. So you guys are getting to hear it and will be able to listen in on the conversation that I am having and how I go about designing a homepage that gets your visitors to take the next step on your website. Hi everybody, today I am super excited to talk about designing a strategic homepage. For a lot of us, this seems like the hardest page to design. While people will tell you that the about page is the hardest page to write, this one is one that we really struggle with to figure out what should be included and what shouldn't, so we're gonna talk about that today. Your homepage is the most important page of your website because it will be the first impression that most people have of you. The goal of your homepage is to communicate who you are, what you do, where a visitor should start on your website, and then inspire them to action. You wanna make their decision about what to do next easy and get them to your content as soon as possible. So your homepage needs to include some basic information, but what we don't wanna do is overwhelm visitors by including so much stuff. We all know that your business has a lot of options. There are services and products and blog posts and social media, and there is a lot that you wanna share and you want to make sure that nobody misses it. And so it's tempting to put all of that on the homepage and hope that people will find it and then figure out where to go next. But what I have found are two mistakes that people make on the homepage, and one is to include all of that stuff, to include everything possible on the homepage and to make it really lengthy. The reason that this doesn't work is because people don't scroll all the way down. I recently worked with a client and their original homepage included a little bit of information about them, but then it linked to all of their blog posts and not just blocks about their blog post, but the full post for quite a few um, posts were included there. And so as you scrolled down their website, people lost interest. And we actually did some testing on this. We watched how people used the site and most people didn't make it past the first paragraph or two of those blog posts because when they landed on the homepage, they weren't expecting to read this big long thing. They just wanted to figure out what the business did, who they helped and what to do if they wanted to learn more. The other mistake that I see on a homepage is not having enough information. So this happens when you come to a homepage and there's the main navigation at the top. There might be an image that gives a little bit of information about what somebody does, maybe a paragraph of text, and that's it. They don't really give you a place to go next. They don't tell you what it is that they're passionate about. You don't really get a sense of who they are and how they can help you right away on their website. And that turns people off because they're going to bounce away. They don't want to have to spend the time to figure out if they're in the right place. So it's a balance, right? We don't want to overwhelm our visitors, but we also don't want to include so little information that people have no idea what they are coming to us for. And so today's episode, I'm going to be walking you through how I design homepages, and then I'm going to hopefully share a few examples with you. There are a couple of things that your visitors should know within seconds of landing on your homepage. So the first thing they should know is, who are you? What is your company name or your name? Let them know that they can trust you by establishing upfront who it is that you are. You don't have to have a full bio here, you know, that's what your about page is for, but you want to include somewhere on your homepage a headshot of yourself and a little bit of information about who you are and your mission in business. Depending on your business, this may be a headshot as the banner image if you are a coach 
or somebody who works directly with people. If you're something like a designer or a photographer and you offer visual services, you want this a little bit further down the page because you want your work to be the first thing that people see. The next thing that you need to establish is what you do. If somebody lands on your homepage and cannot figure out what you do without having to look really hard for it, they're going to leave. That's not helpful. So I really recommend that on top of your banner image or right underneath in some kind of a mission statement, you state specifically what you do. So my website says that I do website design for creatives with a heart to serve. You can be a wedding photographer in such an area. You want to make it clear, you know, the service that you offer and then give it a little bit of fun. Talk about who it is that you work with or what makes you special. This is really important because you need to give people that information up front so they know if they're in the right place or not. You do not want to have a website where somebody has to go to your services page to figure out what it is that you even offer. And as part of this, you want to make sure that you are clear about who you serve. So you can do this partly through the imagery that you choose and the wording that you use, but you also want to make sure that you're actually saying that you work with creative entrepreneurs as a coach, or you work with fun couples as a wedding photographer, or you work in such an area as an event planner, just something to let them know that it's not just anybody that you're taking on as clients, but you really have their dream wedding or website or coaching in mind. Basically, you want to let your dream clients know that they are your dream clients. What I see when we don't do this is that you get a lot of website visitors. A lot of people land on your website. But if they don't know that you are for them, they're not going to take action. But people are lazy. Let's be honest. They are lazy and they have very short attention spans. And so if you don't catch them at the very beginning of their time with you and tell them what you do and who you are and who you're for, then they're not going to look any further. They want to know that up front because otherwise they're going to go move on and find somebody else. For a lot of us, we are in crowded markets. There are a lot of website designers, a lot of wedding photographers, a lot of coaches out there. We're all different, but if we can't communicate that up front to people who land on our website, then we are going to see that we're not getting the engagement that we want based on the number of visitors that we get to our websites. The next thing that you should consider when you design your website is what is your big goal for your website? Now, this is not going to say, you know, my big goal for my website is, but what you want to do is have something that encourages people to take action on that goal, making it clear that this is the first and most important action somebody visiting your website can take. So if your big goal is to get people to sign up for your email list, have an opt-in on your homepage. If your big goal is to get people to read your blog and leave comments, then make sure you link to some really popular blog posts. Just make sure that you're doing this in a way that fits your audience. But if you are not promoting your, your big goal, the thing you want people to take action on on your homepage, they're not going to do it. And finally, include some other options. I would say one or two other options for people who are not ready to take that big step or who have already taken it. So you don't want to ask for too much right away. So you might not want to say, book a call with me right now or click here to purchase, but you can link to something like your blog to give them more content and build a trust. You can send them to your services page if they want to learn more about working with you. But these are the secondary things, whether they are not ready to take that first action, so you want something that's a really low sort of commitment, and then if they've already taken that first action and they're back on your website, then send them to what the next step is. Okay, so now that we know this, that they need to know who you are, what you do, who you work with, and what they should do next, how do you actually lay this out on your website? This is gonna look a little bit different from everybody, but here's what I like to start with in a basic outline. 
First, you want your logo at the top with your business name, and then you're gonna have your main navigation. That's pretty standard. Every website should have that. Next, you want some sort of introduction. For a lot of us, this is some kind of a banner image or a slideshow at the top. It might be full width, which means it spans the whole width of the page, or it might be a smaller block, but you want to catch people's attention right away, and images are a great way to do that. In addition to that, you want to include some kind of a tagline or a mission statement or a headline that catches people's attention right away. And this is where you want to include what it is that you do and who you work with. It doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be wordy, but you want to hone in on what this is to draw people into your website. If you are location-based, make sure you include that pretty early. Don't just leave that in the footer of your website or on your contact page. If you're a location-based business, it's important that people know where you are so they know if it's even worth continuing to look into working with you. Once you have that banner image and the tagline, I like to include a little bit of information about you with your headshot and some fun facts or a bio or something that talks about your mission statement so that people can get to know you. And then I like to have links to the next step. So a great thing to do here is um, a block of your most recent or your most popular blog posts or links to your products that are most popular or your courses that you're promoting. Don't have too many links here. You want to direct people in a way that makes sense, but if you can share things that people who land on your website are going to be interested in, then you're gonna keep them there longer. You're gonna get them more engaged. What you want to avoid is overwhelming your visitors with every option that's available. Your goal here is to make it easy for them to walk through the website step by step and gather all of the information they need to hire you. So send people to the most valuable places first. For a lot of us, this is going to include sending people to our blog so that they can learn from us and get figure out that we are experts in what we do. It also makes sense for a lot of us to send people either to a portfolio or a services page that really highlights what is it, it is that we do and how we can help people. And finally, when you get to the bottom of your website, we talked about this last week in designing your footer, you wanna make sure you're taking advantage of that. So that's a great place to include links to your social media, maybe an Instagram feed. You don't want to include that kind of stuff that takes people away from your website too early because you want to encourage them to take action. But if they get to the bottom of your website and they haven't done anything yet, you wanna give them some good options for continuing to build a relationship with you. As you are designing your homepage, I recommend that you look at the websites that you use frequently and see what it is that they are doing. You're going to notice some trends, you're going to notice things that work and that don't work, and just take all of this and keep it in mind as you're designing your own website. What is it that you like about people's websites and what don't you like? A lot of times this is the very best feedback that we can get is hearing from ourselves about other websites and hearing from people about the websites we currently have because it gives you a good idea of how your dream clients use your website and what makes sense to them and what doesn't. So make sure that you check in with them about that kind of a thing and make sure that you are including those important things on your homepage so that it's really easy for people to connect with you and to take the next step that they need to take in order to move forward in their journey with you. As always, I have a couple of action steps that you can take to make sure that your homepage is strategic. Number one is to add a headshot of you to your homepage if you don't already have one. Number two is to check your copy to make sure it's clear what services or products you offer. This is a really good way to make a first impression with people to let them know they're in the right place. 
And number three, make sure you have a call to action that supports your big goal somewhere on your homepage. This way, you can encourage people to take action on the thing that you want them to do so you can serve them best. Thanks so much for listening and tune in next week to hear all about designing a strategic about page. Thanks for listening to Process to Profitability. Please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show.